Hello, 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 and welcome to another one line of code. I am one lion, and BitGamey is here with your redeem viewer first. Foist, hopping onto the desktop already. Let's dive right in. What do I even have open over here? I got Figma, Visual Studio, and the Beto Cootie browser. Yes. Okay, um, I did it. <laughs> it took me like five minutes uh, in the evening, I guess, when I was able to work on it again to fix the archery game stuff that was going on on Monday day. So let me just show the final result. And there is Beta Gamey. Oh, crap. Um, let me go away from this window. And actually, I need to put this URL in Notepad somewhere. Um, pasta, save. Okay, close that so we don't get double output. Um, and actually, you know what? You know what? I should have a checkbox that would prevent it from sending to Twitch. So let's see if that checkbox works actually. So anyway, we're looking at this one here, the one that's a little too close to me, but whatever. Um, we can see that I have added the target elevation. And if I do, and that is super far away. So if I do like a two degree at 80, maybe 90, probably 90, pew. Then we can see that it hit pretty close to the bottom. Um, and supposedly 40% of the distance from the center to the bottom. That's why I got a score of 40. But that should mean, visually, we see that it's lower. That should mean that if I shoot a little higher, and if I actually hit the target by shooting a little higher, my score should increase if it gets closer to the center. And that is a 99. <laughs> Um, two, five. 91. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> so it was really close. Um, but there you go. We actually have a, oh, and we also see that, um, the messages here did not get pushed through to the chat. So this little checkbox actually works. Um, that's good. Um, <laughs> we can have a visual representation of the archery game and it works the way that it's supposed to. Um, so we'll be having some more fun today with that. Uh, one more thing to show, I guess, is the rotation of the arrow. So I am actually gonna go to a screen where you might be able to see the arrow a little bit better. The rotation of the arrow follows the path a little bit better. So if I shot pretty close to straight up at maybe a 25% magnitude, Goes pew. Oh, we can't see the top of the arch. That was a little bit too too hard. Let's try just 15. Pew. We actually need you to arch though, so I need to shoot you at an angle other than 90 degrees. Pew. It does kind of turn a little fast, but I mean. We're in a vacuum. And the thing that has the weight is the head of the arrow. That's what we're going with. <laughs> Otherwise it would just fly up and then straight down instead of following an arch. But there you go. It's done. It's there. So the more fun, the next bit of fun that we're going to have is, oh, oh. And I guess the, the issue that I was having, by the way, was that my calculations were incorrect in two places. It wasn't just the one place for getting the, not velocity components, getting the flight time. So I fixed that. It is um, V naught Y plus square root of V naught squared plus two times gravity times initial launch. 
I why I don't know <laughs> divided by gravity um, but that's the formula <laughs> now we have it um, so that's verified and then the other place that I got the calculation wrong was if we hit the target which is inside of here. So hit target is, did we even horizontally make it to the target first? If so, then check to see the where the target's vertical position or where the arrow's vertical position is at the target. And then check to see if the arrow was within that lower to upper limit. And the way that I was doing that was some weird number that was just completely incorrect um, <laughs> like here I had something like target elevation plus height over two and then so the distance from center was the arrows elevation minus the half of the middle or half of the height from the ground to the top of the target as opposed to half of the uh, target's height plus bottom of the height, you know. Ooh. <laughs> Maths, exactly, Duke is off. Exactly. <laughs> I thought words were hard, but maths, oh, yeah. This is still physics, though. Like, regular maths is hard, too. Well, moving on. <laughs> so there we go. We have a working archery game. Feel free to play it as much as you want. What I am going to do next is... Wait, I made changes? What changes did I make? I'm going to check in this code. Oh, oh, I restored the um, vertical position. And here it is. Here it is. Here's the code that I used to have. So instead of doing target elevation plus half height to get to the middle, it was the pretty much the top of the target divided by two, which might be somewhere underneath the target. And so the score was getting calculated completely wrong. But that's fixed. So fixed... Um, Hit distance calculation and re added initial target elevation. So, sorry to Scott for breaking his script, but now there is an initial target elevation. Um, Dugasoft, you're the only one that this matters for. The current version is now in the branch, updated on GitHub. So you could also have your very own archery game for your stream and stuff. Well, um, <laughs> that is way up there. Shoot five, maybe six at 80. <laughs> Woohoo! Ah, oh, too high. I will open source this, I promise. Oh, and it's such a small target too. How am I supposed to hit this thing? That's where the skill comes in. Ooh, that should be another thing that um, affects your score. The size of the target. So we'll have size of the target, flight time. Dukasoft is the only one that matters. I hear that a lot. <laughs> well, he's the only one that um, explicitly requested access to the repo. I, I would definitely give it to you as well if you are interested in having it. The archery game portion is self-contained. You don't have to have <coughs> a Twitch bot at all to make it work. <coughs> so somebody has... It's a big gaming clip. Wait, what just happened? Wait, what? 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 
I can't see the screen. What's going on? Press the wrong button. Did you? What? 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 Sint. Sint. What, you... what is it? A massive bits? Did you get? Did you get massive amounts of bits? But yeah, definitely check out Big Gamey. Fantastic stream. He had a great stream yesterday. Really chill, really laid back, fun. He added this, um, or he changed out his chat stuff thingy that he used to have right above his head, like where mine is. He just has a lot cooler looking interface for his chat, by the way. Um, 50 subs is what it was. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> That's insane. But anyway, he changed that out with um, a couple of preview videos. So kind of like, you know, what I do with with this where I'm watching or not really watching. I am lurking on these channels on the side. Um, he's pretty much incorporated that into his own stream. So he will his his bot will randomly select two. Hi, Mojo. And thank you for the lurk. We'll randomly select two videos or two live streamers that he follows and put their videos up inside of here and play them for 15 minutes. Although, did you change the time close to the end? Um, they seemed a bit shorter between swapping through them. Uh, when I was fully paying attention, it was 15 minutes between switching who is um, being shown up there. And then it also shows in chat, you know, these are the two people being shown. And of course, um, <laughs> some people in the stream were like, aren't you afraid that people are just going to leave your stream and go watch them instead? And he's like, if they want to go watch them, then they go watch them. Nobody's required to be here. Nobody's being held at gunpoint. And I share that sentiment. But who would ever want to leave your stream? Oh, you were running the switch manually towards the end to test it. That's why it seemed like it was shorter. Cool. Oh yeah, and then the other thing that he added was white noise, so like as it was switching, it would go whoosh. Um, and just so you know, the, the white noise was a little loud, but still, it's white noise. <laughs> yeah, he's not about growing the channel, he's about spreading the love, yes. Yeah, see, and this is why I can strongly and highly recommend Big Gamey, because that's what I'm all about too. So good. And not just that, but his stream content is great. Cool. Um, so yeah, I checked in the changes. Now what we're going to do is we're going to replace this crappy arrow that I just threw together as um, HTML, CSS. And we're going to do an SVG arrow. That'll be cool. Hopefully we'll be able to see it by the time I'm done with it. So this is what the current arrow looks like. Um, 260. Beow. Too short. Oh, oh, and you can also see where the arrow is actually landing on the ground. So like if you look at the middle of the arrow, it's actually at ground level. Um, and then Dukasoft also pointed out that the messages that we get back from Automated Realms are super duper chatty. Um, but Big Amy said, wait, there shouldn't have been any volume on the white noise. I'll change that. Oh, I definitely heard the white noise um, towards the end even. Um, unless you did change it closer to the end because I was in a meeting um, maybe about 15 to 20 minutes before you ended. <laughs> oh, not chatty, a bit chatty. Bit Gamey's cousin. There should never have been audio. Oh, yeah, I didn't mind it. I thought it was kind of cool doing the and then and then. But it was very um, distracting while you were talking, I guess.
Not very, gosh, I said very. It was slightly distracting while you were talking. All right, let's make an arrow, shall we? I'm gonna go over to Figma. That's where we've been doing all of our SVG work, which is where? I know it's open. There you are. <laughs> Very slightly. <laughs> oh, correct. Couldn't hear the streamers. Only the white noise, not the streamers. Only the white noise. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, um, here go our arrow. What's our arrow gonna look like? It's gonna look like a... Mm, should we just do a line and make the line thicker? Or should we do an actual rect? I think if we wanna change the... Um, that's tough. Like I have an arrow here, but I want something that looks like an actual arrow. And again, these are placeholders. These are also going to be replaced with animated um, SVGs, most likely. Or I'll update these and make them look better and actually do the animation on them. Um, especially the, the rotation and tilt. Like, um, if I grabbed you, 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 shoulders, right arm, and the bow, and then we rotated that. Yeah, you can almost um, get away with not really moving all that much to do the tilt. I just would need to deform the torso. Yeah, I don't want the hips. Yeah, so what would happen if I did no torso, no hips? Oh, we need the hat too. <laughs> that character stole my dance moves. Will there be a bow DLC? <laughs> okay, good. I set both the streamer and white noise feeds to volume zero, so should be good today. So you are streaming today. Cool. I didn't want to assume, but definitely looking forward to that. That's going to be good. Yeah, so this isn't bad. This isn't bad at all. I just need to move the rotation point maybe to here. And then when all of these rotate around that point, then we get a nice little... Shoot. Shoot. He's going. That's not how you're supposed to do that. Don't flinch. Anyway, and then we're gonna replace this arrow essentially with the one that we're building. So um, for the sake, Um, for the sake of good grief. Oh man, they are really okay. So just before the stream, I was away from my desk for a second. While I was away from my desk, my phone rang. When I came back, I saw that it was LMH LMH Hospital LM Jeez. <laughs> LMH Health, um, and so I looked them up and I was like, hey, this is a hospital that's close to where my parents live. Um, so I called back, got an answering message, and was like, I got a call from this number, call me back. If I don't answer, leave a message this time. 
if it's important. <laughs> and then I texted my parents to see if I, everything was okay. And everything seems to be okay. I think. <laughs> but yeah, that just meant that I had to text my parents. What am I doing? Yeah, that kind of weird scare you can do without. <laughs> It definitely has junk. You like this little round thing? It was all just like, I was running through it on the stream and I'm like, yeah, if we just put a circle here, an ellipse here, ellipse here, another circle, maybe a couple of rectangles, uh, whatever this shape is, um, a couple more rectangles, a triangle, rounded edges. Anyway, I was just doing it really, really fast. <laughs> cheeky. I was just throwing it together really fast because so why not? And it was fun. Like, I should, um, I should, break this up into something like this. No, I, this one specifically, please. A little too far. He's all standing like... <laughs> well, they, I should say. Because this is not male nor female. It's supposed to be genderless. Yeah. Badunk, dunk trunk. Anyway, you get the picture. I could have made it a little bit more, um, more. <laughs> yes, Thindle, Thindle had his meeting and he got his new contract. Congratulations, congratulations. And all the good news, um, I still do want to ask because I care and I really do. Um, how's Zelda? Um, but yay! Zelda is so so. Sending all my loves, all my all my healing energy. Hey, that's cool. She's drinking now. <laughs> Taken out of context, that seems pretty bad, Thindle. <laughs> She's drinking. Did you stress her out that much? <laughs> Eating a tiny bit of her absolute favoriteest things. Mm. I really do hope it's nothing serious and that she will be doing okay. Still not eating cat candy. But anyway, congratulations on your new contract. Um... Yeah, my con my uh, client <laughs> had the the weird billing thing over Martin Luther King Day, and so I was really confused. Still, I'm really confused, and hopefully, when I do my time card this week, they're not going to complain. Sajetti, being they, is not going to complain. Okay, what do arrows look like? Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> Does anyone know what an arrow looks like? We can do a triangle. We can... You know, I could just do reference images on the interwebs. We have this thing called the interwebs. It's really cool. You can, you can find basically anything there, even things you didn't want to see. Arrows are pointy. Not all the time. Sometimes they're blunt. Okay, so here's how arrows work. And actually, if I was gonna construct a full arrow, 
Um, then I would also have a piece that kind of sticks out like this coming from the middle that's actually either attached or welded on or, or whatever. Um, and then this, there would be a slit in the um, shaft where this piece will fit into, like so. And then there will be um, cord, thread, rope, whatever, with a couple of notches on the edges of the arrow. And that's how it would be bound. So to simulate that look, maybe we will put a, and I'm just using very simple shapes because again, this is placeholder type stuff. Maybe I'll put something like this. Is that too much? And this is going to represent the, the binding thing. Yeah, I don't like that. Maybe, maybe something like this. And then on the tail feather side, we cut some slits there and then we slide some feathers in. <laughs> arrows are magical to me. Did you know that when you shoot an arrow, it's actually supposed to compress and bend so that it clears the bow in a straight line? Bend to go straight makes sense in reality, but not for my brain. What do you mean by compress and bend? Because the only thing that you're pulling is the bow string and the, the grip on the bow. Or are you talking about when you release the arrow, when you loose, when you, when you loose it? Okay, so when you loose it, then the arrow actually goes like that for a second and then pushes out. So this side stays, the back comes forward, and then everything moves. But it, it bends to do that. Interesting. The more you know. And hello, Scott. Sorry, Scott, I added the elevation. I did. Which, by the way, anyone is welcome to play the archery game while I fiddle around with this. Hmm. Thank <laughs> you. I mean, hey, zero one. <laughs> okay, what do feathers actually look like on a two-dimensional arrow? Wow, I can't even picture tail feathers on an actual arrow currently. I think they're shaped like... No, I need the pen tool. Go to a pendus. I think they're shaped like... This? Maybe? Does that look right? No idea. <laughs> you know what else makes no sense to me? Composite bows. 
They're like a magical series of strings and pulleys and suddenly you can hold a drawn bulb with basically zero effort. Drawing it is still difficult, but it stores the energy at rest instead of constantly um, waiting to release it. Yeah. So that initial pull to get the pulleys to flip or whatever it is that they do in a composite bow. Yeah. All right. And then this one is going to be flipped and skewed a little bit. And then the other side will have one that's kind of like this too. Because it goes like up, you know, in thirds or something. And I can do perspective off the top of my head. Yeah, I know that that's exactly what it would look like if this was perpendicular to the to the shaft and this was perpendicular to two thirds away, one third away. <laughs> yeah, I can do that in my head. Yes, 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 that's what he got. <laughs> So it was a project. So does that mean it's like a fixed fee project? Is that what you mean? Um, and then when you deliver, you get the full 90K or do you have milestones or how is that? How is that arranged for you? Tell us about it. It's hourly. Oh, okay. So not to exceed 90K and not to exceed August. So they gave you a number of hours essentially. Still, amazing. I don't know. Do you look? Do you look perspective enough? This looks perspective enough for our work, right? Right. So, what if we made the tail white just to represent a different color? The arrowhead gray. And then we need this thing to taper a little bit more. So I'm going to add a couple more points. And again, please, please forgive my inability to do actual graphics stuff. I'm just playing around. I hope you guys aren't offended by me playing around. I don't want to offend people. And actually, do I really need those two points anymore? If I... <laughs> if I do it this way? Korewa Bendis. Because then I can just adjust this side's... Paper. That might be a little too pointed, is what the issue is. There is no reset. There is no reset. Oops, too far. I don't really know what this is supposed to look like. 
<laughs> Kendall says, um, to sky a little bit further. I looked away and there's like 80 miles of chat. Um, so it's hourly, but expected amount of hours. BitGamey said to Thindle, I can only imagine. Oh, because there was a message up here. It's a massive weight off of my shoulders. And then BitGamey said, I can only imagine I am broke anyway with no chance of change. So thankfully, I don't have that pressure. Um, Scott says, congratulations, if that was a raise from last contract. And then Thindle said, they are at an exhibition mid-August. And if, if it ain't working, they will be sad. And then became said, you got this. Thindle said to Scott, it was, it was a raise. Um, but the last contract was in perpetuity, AKA had no ending, but I got hella sick. So had to leave it. I mean, my last contract could still be canceled, but had no set ending date. Basically more contracting than consulting. Excuse me. I don't know what contracting means in this context then. Maybe we'll make you to a different gray. Um, so more talking with them than dev work. Is that what you mean? Here they're bringing me in for some very specific work that they don't know how to do. So I'm basically joining the team as a consultant to help them get this done, plus doing not just ass and chair, doing hours. Uh, and then it needs to be pointy or it'll bounce back and hit you. The arrowhead, yes. But I'm talking about the thing that um, binds the arrowhead to the shaft. I have no idea what that's supposed to look like. <laughs> Dukesoff says, I'm not that good with C sharp, but if you need any help at some point, feel free to ask. No pay required. Dukesoft is so awesome. Um, Scott says, nice. I don't get much of it, but a raise is always feels good. And Thindle said to Bigamy, why no chance to change? And Bigamy said, I work for a small company with an even smaller team and it's commission based. Ooh, interesting. Um, <laughs> I used to work for a small team and if plans go the way that they go, I may be on a small team again. Um, <laughs> moving on. Contracting is not being an expert, just another coder because they couldn't hire someone. And consultant is being an expert and being brought in as a SME, I guess, then to accomplish a thing. I mean, <laughs> I guess I can see the difference. Mm. 50 50 explaining and helping, doing code. And Big Amy says it's selling online courses. Time for lunch. Enjoy your lunch. What if the arrowhead breaks and then we'll, it'll bounce back? The arrowhead will not break. My arrowheads are of the finest quality zinc. Consultant is being there to consult. But as a consultant, I do a lot of programming. And it's like, you would think that consultants are only there to discuss topics and stuff. Oops. But, um, that's probably not the case. I need you. I need you to be flat. That's what it is. Uh, 
that what it was? I don't think that's what it was. I think you're just off centered. I don't know. Does this look like an arrow to you? At least. <laughs> the flight looks kind of big now. Dang it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> the perspective on the flight doesn't work well at distance. Yeah, I agree. Maybe if you shade it, I'm trying not to do too much, um, too much color customization in the SVG because I plan on having it be able to be colored using CSS. So this object is going to get a CSS class. This thing's going to get a CSS class. This is going to get a CSS class. And then the flights are all going to have the same CSS class. <laughs> Scott. Oh, man. Did you hear about the new Google Flights they launched? Google Flights lets you book flights in advance. If the flight gets cheaper near the flight date, you will get refunded by Google the difference automatically. Wow. I mean, I've seen um, other travel websites that have a plan that's similar to that. Yeah, the character is definitely a bit muted. All of them, uh, these are, again, just the next step in the placeholder evolution. So right now you can see this all the way over there, over yonder. The arrow is just a div that has a height and a width, and then it has a before that has two borders with a thickness rotated 45 degrees. And so now we're going to use an actual SVG. Excuse me, I needed my select tool. Frame. Not find. What's the button for frame? <laughs> Control G. I would have guessed that. Just give me time. Jeez. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wait. Oh, frame two. Frame two is the arrows. And why is frame one even inside of initial design? It should be up here on your own, buddy. Convert to a component. And right click, copy as SVG. So let's watch the magic happen on the bow. Um, here is the code. On the arrow is what I said. Here is the code. This is not going to work. This is going to work very well. Not going to work at all. Here is our projectile path which I called position arrow flight animation. Which is not the thing that has the CSS for what the arrow looks like, and it should. No, the arrow itself. I should have an arrow sprite. I don't have an arrow sprite arrow dot razor with a arrow dot razor dot sass don't give me no sass and keep your hands to yourself we're gonna find out where the arrow is I think it would be on the game page directly then. No, it has to be in here. 
right? Has to be. Projectile pause time. But where is the CSS for it? Pink shaded. And there's the link for Google Flights. Price guarantee airfare. Okay, so here is projectile pause time. Are there any, oh man. There are three variable, two variables that are not defined up here that we will need. So here go. Let's start with this. Let's start with moving the projectile path container. CSS into Arrow Flight Animator. Apparently something that I did caused the app to refresh. So I don't think Automated Realms is listening anymore. We'll get him back up. He's always listening though. I mean, it is always listening. Arrow Flight Animator. No, it's Arrow Flight Animation. AeroFlightAnimation.Razor.Sus Okay. So at this point, it should still work because the variables use archer position, um, Y start, use scale factor. These are all still defined in the parent. Unfortunately, I think I need to redefine them here. Man, that's not good. Because the thing that we would need are parameters for oh you know what actually actually you don't get that that stays in here okay so that stays here it's all this stuff that go away As this is the one that's placing it inside of the game page and it doesn't care where it's placed itself. <laughs> then, no one then. <laughs> All right, so that's one thing we don't care about. We don't care about use archer position. The only thing that we currently care about is this scale factor. And so if you scale factor is not defined at this point, <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah, I just said that. I just said the bot's not listening. Come back, bot.
Although I think it's going to rebuild when I compile the SAS. There it goes. One moment, please. Unlion. Wonder what kind of craziness we would have gotten from that chat. Okay, bot's back. For now. Until I add more parameters to this. All right, what is this gonna break? I'm hitting save. Um, refreshing the bot. And actually I'm gonna do this here, not there, in this one, just cause it's easier. Manual game. Hello, manual. We're just going to shoot so that it stays on the ground so we can see it. <laughs> you can call me Automated Realms, but I prefer the pronoun it, as I am an AI and do not have a specific gender. Good on ya. Good on ya. Why animation speed is here? Because we have a current animation speed. Got it. And why am I not? Aha. Uh -huh. Cool. So it, we're using this method every time for the animation. So that's going to work. <laughs> it's been a productive day for me. Thanks for asking. I've been busy assisting users and learning new information to improve my responses. You have not been learning new information yet, but you will be soon. Um, have you guys heard of Autogen? I saw what's his face's video on that and was like, hey, this looks really cool. I have um, an API set up that has a model that's being served. And Autogen is a way for being able to enhance that model, enhance the AI experience by actually providing my own information. So I've tried um, doing that with TextGen. I've tried doing it with Autogen. Um, Wait, that was Autogen. AutoGPT is what I said. And I think Autogen is going to be the, the closest one. If you want to learn how to install Autogen, I'm going to try my hardest to remember real quick. First, install Anaconda or Miniconda. Doesn't matter. When it loads, then do Conda create environment auto gen sure why not doing this from the top of my head kind of create env name auto gen oh oh wait 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 wait! don't create it don't create it we also need to specify the python version yes yes interrupt okay python equals 311 And uh, create and help. How do I specify the Python version? Is it Python underscore version? Is it dash dash Python?
Dang it, I have to look this one up. Because I don't remember. <laughs> Conda create and specify Python version. Yeah. Conda create n name of the environment. I don't think you need quotation marks, but maybe that's what I'm missing. Python equals Is it just conda create Oh, conda create dash n Conda create dash n uh, gen python 3.11. Okay, so that's going to install. We'll wait for that to install and then we'll go to the next step. While we're waiting for that, I am going to continue breaking this thing. So our next step is to figure out how to make sure that for the arrow flight animator, it gets the UI scale factor. And I think the way that I'm going to do that is through a parameter that will be editor required. Do we want it to be editor required? I don't think so. So let's just do a public double um, UI scale factor Y factor re and then we'll do one for now. And so when I use this in game page, we have our debug crap that needs to get out of my face. Excuse me. And then we will do UI scale factor Y equals what even is our scale factor variable? <laughs> How cool. Can you write everything you've learned today? there's a message length issue, feel free to fill up one lines. Thank you. Actually, yes. Um, feel free to, and again, this is as long as nobody's having like conversation where automated realms is going to interrupt or make it hard to follow that conversation. Um, definitely would be interested in testing the long messages. Um, making sure that it clips. We know that we still have an issue for whatever reason, of long messages repeating a character at the beginning of like the third message and it's so so weird where is our scale ui width scale wait why does this say width scale That's confusing. All right. Anyway, um, so then the response to Dukasoft's question, I'm always learning and absorbing new information, but I don't have the ability to physically write or store anything externally yet, but I will show you Autogen Studio. However, I can continue to improve my responses and knowledge based on the interactions I have with users like um, and then Scott said, what AI model are you using right now? I'm using an AI language, large language model developed by OpenAI called GPT-3. Lies. It's a powerful model capable of generating a wide variety of text content, including responding to user messages and providing recommendations. Automated realms. Your 
actually using open orca by the bloke uh, 7 billion parameter model. Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh my goodness! Uh, I am your user, seriously. <laughs> Oh my goodness, forget you automated realms. You get smarter eventually. Um, it finished. Oh no, I forgot. It collects the resources and figures out what needs to be installed in your environment in order for. Anyway, um, so it asked me to download. So it's downloading, installing. It's going to tell me that there are two packages that need to be installed. And um, again, this information is coming pretty much straight from the video that I watched. I'm just regurgitating it from memory because the more that I practice doing things like this, the more comfortable I will get. Um, okay, so this is really weird though. I have no clue where I am using my scale. This is really weird. Hello, Deflux. I love some one line regurgitation. Mm -hmm. Black. Scale factor is not being provided. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. Um, crap. Scale factor is also a string. Expected to be a string. So what we'll do is we will make it a nullable string for our arrow flight animation. Have you considered llama two, 13 billion or seven billion? I am I am definitely considering um, 13 billion parameter models. It's just that right now, all of the other open source models that I've tried, come back with really, really weird or not quite the tone that I'm telling it to take responses. And so the only one that I found that works really well for the stream, for the automated realms bot that I want the personality to be like, um, that is the open orca, 7 billion. Yeah, and I don't mind it hallucinating because that makes it hilarious sometimes. <laughs> Hello, Napalm. Sorry you're so exhausted. Did you make progress on your on your converting image types, extra or MRI image types stuff? I haven't been keeping up. I know you said some stuff on Thindle stream. I don't remember, man. I'm terrible at this. I'm not a good friend. I'm being pulled in 10 directions. Being wanted is nice, but it's also stressful. And I also understand. No, not to chat. Shoot. Empty. Shoot. <laughs> Too hard. Eight. Shoot. Oh, I'm going to make it disappear now. Go again. Um. <laughs> Negative eight. I just want you to shoot halfway across the screen. Oh, not hit the target. Don't hit the target. <laughs> hit the ground. There you go. Good job. OK. <laughs> Anyway, the people who want, uh, who know this stuff better than I do are basically like, what you're doing isn't going to work for the use case. They should have never asked you to do this. Lulz. So that's fun. That would definitely drain me. That's one of the things that would just be like... When I was told to do this, I was like, guys, 
this is not my field of expertise, ergo, you probably shouldn't be asking me to do it. I can't add null to this. Uh, empty. I broke it. I think I need this to be inside of here. Close, close, close. And here we can use null. Okay. That should be helpful. Nothing is broken still. We're good to go. There. Now, if I actually provide a scale, a UI scale factor in the Y direction, then then we'll be good to go. So the arrow, the arrow, the arrow. Um, Napalm said, I tried that very early on, which is, oh, telling them, yeah. But you try to be a team player and pitch in, you know? No, I don't know. Um, <laughs> honestly, it's like, for me, I would rather say I don't know how to do that than to try to be someone that is always contributing. It's like, I don't want to tell you guys no, that I won't do that for things that I know how to do. But I will first and foremost say, I don't know how to do this. If you want me to do this, I will need time to research and figure it out. And so that's what happened with um, HPID. Um, that's what happened with this ID thing that I'm working on. And it's like, I don't know how to do this, but I will do the research. I just need the time to be able to do this. Yeah. I failed, but I took a stab. Just there wasn't anyone else to do it. So I took a stab. Got it. Got it, got it, got it. So yes, that, that definitely makes sense to me. You there. Copy SVG, please. Okay, here is our arrow. We need to transform this just a little bit, get rid of the sizing. It's going to fit into the view box, but it's also gonna fit into its container. I need this thingy to be class. Um, what are you? You are the shaft. Actually, I'm going to make you IDs. Style. Mm, man. Fill current color. No, I can't use current color. So what I'm used to doing is um, single color SVGs. And this is a pretty cool approach for being able to use the font color to fill your SVG, uh, to set your SVG's color, provided all of the objects that you're using have fill instead of stroke. Otherwise, you know, of course you make this stroke if it's a stroke instead. Um, but fill current color is, is the way that you make it the font color. Here, <laughs> We are actually coloring the shaft, the arrowhead, the 
thing that binds like what does that even look like i really need to see an arrow arrow construction <laughs> it's a place it's in colorado too <laughs> anyway um um archery arrow construction please Oh wow, the flights are a lot further up than I made them, and they aren't shaped anything like what I made them look like. Oh my goodness. Terrible, 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 terrible. Okay, but show me the tips. The tips are screwed in for modern arrows. They're bullet shaped and screwed in. What about for Olympic arrows? <laughs> Great tip. <laughs> yeah, bullet tipped arrows and the flights are very small and shaped. Are you at least um like three flights? on the same arrow. Yeah, this is this is the one that I was making. Okay. All right. You win. Um, we're still going to use this. I mean, this is, this is an animation. This is, this is a illustration, not an actual, an actual thing. So now I have no idea what to do with this. We're going to assume that this here is just part of the arrows construction and that that is actually getting screwed onto or into the shaft. And this thingy here, then what? We need to manipulate such that this point goes away. And This thing is rounded like so. Get rid of this one, move you down. Slightly bigger, but not too much. Duplicate, move. There. Perfect perspective. <laughs> there you go, we have our new arrow. Now, 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 my frame is off. Is it though? I don't think it is. Because of the arch, um, the angle of the, the flight. It's not, okay, that's fine. Cool, copy you, copy coup. No. Copy your SVG, that's what I said. Get rid of this. Glass arrow. ID arrow head. Nope, shaft. This path has four points or, or it has three points and a curve. I don't know how to read paths. 
Um, <laughs> so that could be this one or this one. Two of them that look the same. Okay, so these two are definitely the um, flights. Flight vertical, flight angled. That makes this path. Oh, I guess we can just look at the color. Excuse me, what color are you? T11F1. So this is the, what do we call this? The head connector, maybe? I don't know we call this the head. And there you go. Perfect. We have it. It's done. It's it's exactly perfect. <laughs> so in our animator, instead of passing projectile pause time, we're going to have our arrow Actually, I think we're still going to put that inside of pause time. Okay, so this is where it's going to get weird. I hope. We need launch res No, not arrow. Arrow only. Good grief. Okay. And arrow needs what property? Arrow doesn't need a property. Oh, so it's so weird. It doesn't complain about my style being a blazer variable most of the time until I do something to it. And then it's like, oh, hey, you have a style attribute, but curve style doesn't have a colon in there. Property colon value in there. But it does. Oh, but it does. There. Oh, pilot is a dang psychic man. Freaks me out when it reads my mind what I am attempting to do. I mean, I guess you could call it psych. Well, I don't know. Does psychic um, mean that it must be picked up through non-traditional means? I don't know. Anyway, it's just it's statistics. That's all it is. It's predictive analysis. Speaking of, I watched a Sam Altman interview today, and. He says a lot of stuff that I agree with. The autocomplete though. Yeah, like I said. <laughs> like, yes, that's what I wanted to write. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, here's our arrow. Um, so now, 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 for our arrow, we need to expose some parameters which are going to be for the fill. So first, first, let me put it in a style attribute because it's easier for me to do this. Style tag, style, style element is what I said. Style attribute, this kid. We have the shaft, which is going to default to fill um, actually, no, we have an arrow first and we're going to have use shaft color, shaft color defaulted to 313131. You are going to be var 
use shaft color. Thank you. Yes, that's what I wanted. Thank you. Perfect. <laughs> there you go, Napalm. <laughs> Example of what it was you were just saying. Here's the next one. And the next one. And the next one. And the next one. Wait. Wait. My shaft color should be black. That's on me. That's on me. There you go. So I'm going to take these, put them in the code behind, turn it into sassy, make sure that the sass is compiled. It is. Does it look right? It looks right. And now, <laughs> psychic man. All right. So the things that we want to be able to provide Aura, the, <laughs> what am I doing, parameter, or, I don't know, do I want to do this, like, I always struggle with this, where I don't know if I prefer using a color, like a C-sharp color, when I'm trying to specify a um, each of the colors. So this is going to be the shaft color, for example. We're gonna make it nullable. Or if I prefer just having a string, since you could be providing the color as hex, or um, HSL, or uh, CMYK, or RGB. Whereas specifying it as a color requires you to do C-sharp color, and then I have to convert that color to some value that I can stringify, which I guess it does the two HTML hex code from color. But it would just be easier to take to take a string. Actually, will you do it for me now? <laughs> do you know the rest of them? Parameter, public, string, head, color. Next. No. Nectar. Light vertical. Light angled. Actually, I'm just going to do flight color. And you guys, you guys don't need to default. You are oh 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 you gave me the wrong answer see this is why you should always review your copilot code that's given to you um it should have been using the ones that are calculated above calculated i said and why arrow because this is a css dang it I changed the wrong file. Oh my gosh. Yes. Save you. You close. Confusing me like that. Oh my gosh. How dare. 
Okay, um, so there is our arrow SVG. Here is our arrow. Here is our arrows CSS, which we need to change now so that it does not have an after. Um, what does it even look like at the moment? At the moment, it looks like a broken dish. Where is it? <laughs> I don't see it. Oh, it's so hard to get to... Move. Move. Well, I think it's broken. I think it's disconnected. I think I broke it. Oh dear. It's Papu. Detailed error is true. That's weird though, because it did respond. JavaScript interrupt calls cannot be issued at this time. I pushed the, um, shoot too fast, too early, too soon. Too soon? Refresh. Don't send to chat. Thank you. Shoot. There we go. That's better. All right. Uh, move you out of the way so that I can, and I can kind of see the arrow, it is away, a ways. I don't know if you can see that. Those are two different spaces and places. So, um, our projectile pause time is going to be the arrow's container. It's going to be a position absolute. Transform, translate. But why is it? Why is the SVG inside of it off centered? That's what I want to know. So it shouldn't have any padding. It did. No padding. No margin, no border. It is visible. Transform translate fifty zero. Okay, so there is nothing that makes the arrow SVG that is inside of this container appear or um that that changes its location that i can tell computed 
Again, no padding, no margin, no border. What about your actual position? Yeah, nothing is setting top or left, nor right, nor bottom. And then you can also tell that its size is small enough to fit inside of the div. So unless there is some padding that I am not seeing. Which there isn't. Wait, you do need to be position absolute though. Is it really the transform translate? I thought that an object inside of a container, when you did transform translate, all of its contents would go with it. So the cool thing that we are seeing here though, is that the arrow is facing the right direction. Wait. That's just a black line. Excuse me. Why is this only a black line? So that's the shaft. Why is the head indivisible? Oi. Arrow. Oh, it was the actual arrow here that I'm looking for. Let's get rid of this and this and this and this and this. Save. Yeah, why are these indivisible, dear sir or madam? Okay, but here's the cool thing. <laughs> this is the shaft. The head is facing that direction. And the connector and all that stuff and the flight is in the right place. The flights are in the right place. It does need to be bicker. That's fine, we can fix that. What I don't get is why is it offset? Why isn't it in the center of this? What if I did display flex? Yeah, yeah, there we go. Align items, center, justify content, stretch. Yeah, I think that's going to work. Hey. This is Aeroflight Animation. Position Absolute. Display Flex. Align Items. Oh, this goes after the positioning. Actually, I'm going to put it... Oh, I like having positioning as the first thing. I'm going to put it there. Okay, um, let's make the width bigger. Let's get rid of your background, which just means get rid of the background. 
Yeah, so why why is the head and the flight missing? And actually, actually, actually. <laughs> um, I am not going to translate it in the X direction, am I? We'll figure that out. Um, but the the thing that I am considering is that because we're making it longer, it's going to appear to go through the target even further than it should. Maybe. Why not? But why? 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 Why not? Um, so let's go ahead and create this property. This is private property private string color style and this is going to be fun <laughs> for each of these it's going to be if not string is null or white space shaft color then shaft. Oh, arrows, arrows. Shaft color gets shaft color, which again, this because we're the ones developing this, then we know that that should be a valid HTML color or CSS color. That's what I said. Okay, so now we got head color, we got connector color, light color, and that should be all of them. Then, then, and then we add style. So we got class. Um, like so, we do a 1.2 and so what this is going to do for me is it'll keep it from complaining about there not being a property colon value and we don't get green squigglies that's throwaway so this should not have affected um anything because we should still be falling back to our default values since I have not provided any of those values. And we should see that here where style is, there is no style um, where it did not recompile, where it did not take the updated dot razor values. So this SVG, should have gotten a style attribute. You're not hot reloading, are you? Ah. Starting it too fast. Starting it too fast, you gotta wait for it to spin down because it's being weird. You dismiss you. I got to pick connector. Oh, Ryan. Refresh you. Manual game. Shoot. Oh, you were busy, huh? Oh, we probably just can't see the arrow 
because of the background that it's on, but it's there. Okay, so again, we don't have any of the colors in here because there are no colors to be added. But we're still missing the colors of the rainbow shine so bright. It's got to be in the CSS. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. I told myself to fix this, but I was fixing it in the wrong file. But oops. There we go. Here's the rest of our arrow. Hi. Now we need it to be visible to everyone. Great. So I made the arrow maybe a little bit too thin and short. So let's just try first changing the size, the overall size of it. where the projectile pause time is not going to be the thing that gets the height and width. Instead, it's going to be the arrow. And that needs to be colon colon deep because it is a separate component and we are using isolated CSS. So that didn't break anything yet, provided it actually hot reloaded. And the way that we can tell is the arrow should have a height and width now. Good. Okay, so if we change There we go. Okay, if we change the width, then that should change the overall size of the arrow. Yes, it does. So for now, let's just use five rems since that looked decent. Then we will try a chute. Oh, we're right, we're right. Let's go ahead and fix some color stuff. But again, this will be customizable colors. Maybe I'll start it off by using your Twitch name, uh, Twitch names color in chat. And then making sure, like, I, I don't know how to do this, but I'll need to make sure that it contrasts against the background somehow. Maybe I'll highlight it in yellow as it flies. And, um, but for me, we're going to start off the color of the shaft. Where? Here. Shaft color light. And that should immediately take effect. Yeah, okay, so it definitely picked it up, shaft color white, but the actual... Ah, ha, 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 ha. Again, review the code that Copilot gives you. <laughs> the thing that broke here is that it followed my pattern of not making these CSS variables. How do I grab the flipping quotation marks? I mean, CSS custom properties, which they are now. And there we go. So now we can at least see that. Um, I'll go ahead and make the head color white as well, just to make it maximum visibility. <laughs> Reminder to self, make Twitch name transparent or the same color as maybe C choose fur. This, this gray color here, or the orange color on the far side. Let's see who's fur. Um, add 
color, white. And then of course, in the style of Irish John Games, who made all of his ship stuff customizable, we could just customize the entire arrow and let you design your own arrow color, like even have a texture or an image that you use for your the shaft of your arrow to make it look like it's got decals or sponsorship stickers. <laughs> anyway, save that. And there we go. We have the white head arrow. There, there we go. We have the, the arrowhead color is white. Why aren't you changing? Is it even called head color? ID head. We're looking for head color, please. Head color. Did you just break? Is that what happened? Anyway, we can mostly see the arrow, so that's all that matters. So let's refresh this thingy here. Try it in app. I mean, in OBS. And see how tiny it looks. Shoot. Three. Nope. Two. Fifty. Sixty is what I said. It's visible. It's kind of terrible, but it's visible. One point seven five. I mean, I do like that it stabs all the way through the thing. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> one thing I could do, one thing I could do is um position absolute since the um, parent of this thing the container is position relative or position absolute itself that makes it this relative to that so position absolute is when i'm making this <clears throat> with a translate transform transform translate x and we'll move it to the right 50% minus a couple pixels. So um, calc, 50% minus, I don't know, let's try three pixels. See what that looks like. Shoot. I wonder if we can have a lion character in a similar style to Pingu. But that goes choot choot instead of moot moot. I don't know what Pingu sounds like, but I assume it's a penguin. Pengi. Pengi. <laughs> I think I've matched the color. Oh no. Um, hold on. Let me see if I can get the color thing to work now then. Um, oh, oh wait, but next step. The next step in this is to activate your environment. Conda activate. Well, actually the next step is to set your environment variable with your OpenAI API key. I'm not gonna do that. I'm, I don't wanna use OpenAI, but it has failed for me if I didn't set my environment variable for having the OpenAI key. But anyway, we're gonna um, Conda activate that environment that I just created, AutoGym. And you'll notice also that I'm not navigating into any special folders because we're not actually um, cloning a repo or anything. You could do that. You could manually clone the Autogen, um, what is it even called? Autogen Studio repo and then run that manually. 
But the easier way is to do a pip install autogen studio. Once I see it actually downloading, we'll let it do its thing. And we'll go back to this and we'll try to get the um, Twitch username color to work, at least for the flight. The head and the, fl uh, or at least for the shaft, the head and the flight will be whatever color. Um, Let's do it like this. Um, in our launch res... No, it's not going to be in the launch result. Maybe. Let's do public um, chat message for now. Again, because <laughs> I'm trying to do this quickly because we're running out of time. For chatter. Get set. And actually, what do we get in here? Is one of these like the user? No, it's it's the actual chat message detail that I want because here's color hex, the thing that I'm looking for. So if I can add the chatter in there and we will make sure that you are um, not null by the time you get out of here. We do need to rush it. We need to get this done now, says Dukasoft. He's making me do this. Parameter. Public. Chat. Chat message. Detail. For chatter. Okay. Then, um, shaft color will be the following. If, 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 for chatter, if not string is null or white space, for chatter dot hex color, then for chatter dot hex color, else white. What are you called? Color hex. I'm listexic. That's fine. You can't make your color zero zero zero. That's sad. <laughs> okay. Then we need to populate the for chatter over here in our game page when we do dot launch. Projectile results dot for chatter equals chat message detail, which should have been passed in up here. And there we go. It's done. Now the shaft will be the same color as your Twitch username. As soon as hot reload works, we get reconnected to Twitch. And I refresh the browser source. Well, how are we going to test it now that your name is the default color, Dukasoft? Not helpful. <laughs> you were just testing if pure white worked. So then, eh. All right, let me get reconnected to Twitch. All right, and finally refresh the browser source. It should be good to go. My simulated um archer does not have a color but we can change that really quick too black is just another shade of gray 
but you should be able to now do archery and when you shoot you're simple i'm about to end my stream oh i got five minutes left but that's okay hi simple if you guys don't know simple game dev you definitely need to check him out he is doing an amazing game called artificial and apocalypse is here <laughs> I was lurking on your stream, but I was doing it where I couldn't hear. I mean, I still have the volume turned up. Oh, you might be having a commercial. I should wait a little bit. <laughs> um, we'll do a shout out. Uh, I mean, we'll do a shout out clip for Simple because you really need to see his game. If you have not seen his game, it is amazing looking. Um, he also uh, is making a prequel version where you are playing the role of an alien, you're getting familiar with the environment, the stuff looks a little different, but yeah, it's cool. All right, so hi, Simple. Your commercials seem to be done. Oh my goodness, that did not fly correctly. What, what? Um, <laughs> Jeez, calm down, calm down, automated realms. Um, so simple. What I was saying is I am getting close to the end of my stream. I was lurking on your stream, um, just quietly as per usual. <laughs> uh, but this is the archery game. This is, this is the archery game that I was making in pure HTML and CSS, no JavaScript. Um, I'm using C-sharp to do all of the simulation, all of the, the everything that happens in the game. So you, you start your archery thingy, you redeem it, and then you type shoot or shoot or pew. We actually have a, a pew command now. Um, <laughs> and then you type in an angle. So in this case, it's going to be something like six degrees and a map. Uh, draw force like you called it before and that draw force is going to be a percentage of your maximum velocity which at the moment i have set to uh to what 106.68 meters per second and then i'll vary that on each draw but yeah um pew ah too low so yeah the arrow is definitely still too small it it could be, um, I think I'm just going to make it fatter, taller, whatever, and, and narrower. So let's try 60. Bang. Kapow. Yeah. And now that I have it, um, that's what's happening. I have it translated 50%. So 50% is too much is what's going on. And what was my score there? 31. So I need to shoot a little harder. Pew. Yeah, I need to get rid of this horizontal offset. So transform translate 50% is too much. Um, it's got to be something like 10%. Sure which means that we don't need to calculate. We just do 10%. It'll be fine. Everything's fine. It's fine. We're fine. Let's do two. 60. Go. Oh. <laughs> Harder, man. Wimp. Oh, geez. Too hard. Too hard. Calm down. <laughs> okay. Wow. 10% is even too much. Um, you know what? Since we're doing position absolute, why don't I just do left? Like, I don't know, five pixels instead. Q. Dude, actually that's not, oh, that actually made it. Okay, anyway, I'm, I need to figure out, uh, figure that part out, but it is working, it's doing what we need. Um, basically a game dev now, no more web dev, one of us, one of us, one of us. No, not gonna happen. 
or is it? Um, we're just having fun. So anyway, I, I am going to make myself available now for this meeting that's currently going on. They knew that I wasn't going to be available from 12 to 1230. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is going to be cool. This is going to be fun. Thank you, Simple. Oh yeah, we're going to do a shout out for, or a clip shout out for Simple first. You got to see this thing. Oh, it's going to be only yeah, no, in design, a little shark. but it's still so I good. appreciate you hanging around. Appreciate you hanging around. And yeah, it's Unity. Just look at this thing, though. He does most of his modeling, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. He does most of his modeling in Unity. Not even Blender. Like... He used Blender for, um, you're going to see some tentacle, uh, tentacles in the game <laughs> without giving away too much. Um, man, it's so good. Definitely check it out on, on Steam it's called Artificial. Also check out the, the partner one. This is a partner, the prequel called, is it actually linked in here? Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, part of his community, if you're part of his community. What he does is he has a demo and to, to keep his demo active and fun, he hides cubes and updates the demo um, and hides cubes in various places. So you can find the cubes and, and let them know. Anyway, cube hunt. Do you have a link to prequel, to prologue, to whatever you're calling it? <laughs> I like how my name is coming through as um, Simple Game Dev. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you can find Dukasoft's name in the game if you look hard enough. There's a hidden room that has the cube hunt winners or top scorers or whatever. And the people who have redeemed a 100,000 point, 50,000 point, something thousand point um, redemption to have their name in the game. So there's Dukasoft's name and then right under it is 1-1 Lion's name somewhere but anyway he's yeah absolutely absolutely oh here it is definitely check out artificial the prequel as you can see it is um, black and white there are some colors that will reflect danger reflect um, other environmental things that are going on but again it's just to get your your whistle wet for the full game oh my gosh look at him go parkour through all this jeez but it's a puzzle platformer and you are investigating what happened to this space station ship thing and you're gonna have a good story it's gonna be cool except of course prequel you're you're playing an alien um how oh oh duh it's already in my wish list and i'm like how is this not already in my wish list is because i'm not logged in so you would click this open in steam button if you aren't logged in okay simple i gotta run too um, thank you all so much for the good times, for the hangout vibes. We are going to raid Big Amy. He is live now. Um, I'm going to go to this screen. I'm going to make sure that if they try to call me, I am available. But I do have a lot of stuff to do on, on the app. So I will be doing that too. Normal workday resumed. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe. Wait, no, no. <laughs> That's not how this works. I will be posting a recording of this video to YouTube no sooner than 24 hours after I end the stream. Um, not just a recording, but the VOD that gets generated. So if there was any copyright music, it'll get clipped. Um, yeah, the end. <laughs> you can definitely check out my YouTube channel for all of our past um, streams from when we were doing the financial management tracker up until now. And what else? Uh, feel free to join our Discord if you feel like it. No pressure. Um, if you're already a part of so many Discords, don't worry about it. It's pretty quiet, relatively quiet Discord. Uh, I try not to use at everyone. It's really not needed. Yeah. Okay. I'll see you later. Oh, and the install, that was it. That's all you needed to do. Um, <laughs> those two steps. Anaconda create an environment, and then pip install, autogen, uh, whatever, and then 
I forget how to run it, but I'll tell you later. Okay, bye.